In this video, we'll try to understand the Cox proportional hazardous model, which can be used as a regression technique in survival analysis. To understand the Cox proportional hazardous model, we first need to understand the hazard. As we discussed in the previous video, the following kaplan meier curve can be used to describe the survival over time. After one year, one out of the initial six subjects died, which results in that the proportion of the subjects that are alive after the first person died is about 83%, because five out of six are still alive. After six years, another person died out of the five individuals that were still alive. This results in that the proportion of the subjects that are alive after the second person died is about 67%, because four out of six are still alive. We'll now see how to calculate the hazard rate, which is the probability that a patient will die between two time points, given that the patient has survived up to time t. Note that the time interval is close to zero, which means that the hazard function should actually be considered as a continuous function. However, to estimate the hazard for our example, we here use time steps that correspond to years, which will simplify the understanding of the hazard in this example. Since only one person died after one year out of the six individuals during the first year, the hazard in this time step is 0 0.1667. This means that the risk of dying during the first year is about 16.7%. Let's place this value here. We'll now calculate the risk of dying in the following time interval. Since one person died out of the five individuals that were still alive during the five years between year one and six, there is a 4% risk of dying per year during this time interval. During the next interval, the risk of dying during one year is 6.25%. And during the next interval, the risk of dying is 66.7%. The reason why the risk is so much higher here than in the previous intervals is due to that two out of three died within just one year. Since the last person died within one year, the hazard is 1. The hazard function is also sometimes defined like this, where the hazard rate is equal to the derivative of the survival function at time t, divided by the survival at time t. We can estimate the derivative of the survival function in the following interval by calculating the slope of this line. We then plug in the derivative here and the survival, which gives us the exact same hazard rate as before. Similarly, we can calculate the slope or the derivative from year 1 to year 6. If you plug in the survival probabilities and do the math, which will again result in the exact same hazard as before. Let's place the table here. If you now plot the estimated hazards over the years, we will get the following hazard function. Note that the hazard function is a continuous function, which means that we can think of this as we fit the curve to the data, which will give us the estimated hazards over time. We can also estimate the cumulative hazard, where we sum the hazards like this 0.167 plus 0.04 is 0.207. If we add 0.0625 to the previous sum, we get 0.2695 and so forth. We'll now see how to calculate the hazard ratio. We'll here calculate the hazard ratio based on the following data set. In this example, six subjects were enrolled in group A and six in group B. For example, the ones in group A might represent cancer patients on an old treatment, whereas the ones in group B 
might represent cancer patients on a new treatment. By studying the survival curves, it seems like the ones in group B generally have longer survival times compared to the ones in group A. These are the estimated hazards at the given time points. Let's plot the hazards of group A and group B. Now, let's imagine that we fit two curves to the data. The way the Cox proportional hazards model is fitted to the data is quite complicated because it involves partial likelihoods. I will therefore not explain that here. To get the rough understanding of how the method works, suppose that we instead would use simple multiple linear regression on the logged hazards. If we would compute the natural logs of these values and plot these against the survival times, we would get this plot. We then fit a simple multiple linear regression model to the log data where we assume that both lines have the same slope. The only difference is where the lines intercept the y-axis. Let's consider group B as our baseline group, where the intercept has been estimated to negative 2.9 and the slope to 0 0.16. Since the two lines are assumed to have the same slope, we can define the fitted line of group A like this which is equal to the line of the baseline group, plus some constant, which results in that group A has a different intercept. x is here equal to 1, because x is here a binary variable, where group A is coded as 1, and group B as 0. Beta is here estimated to be about 1.1, which means that the intercept of group A is 1.1 bigger than the one for the baseline group. If we take e to the power of the value of beta 1, we'll get the so-called hazard ratio. Note that this hazard ratio is based on our simplified multiple linear regression model and not on the actual method used in the Cox proportional hazards model. If you instead used a statistical software, to fit the following Cox proportional hazards model to the data. Beta will be estimated to 1.2515 instead of 1.1. E to the power of 1.2515 is equal to approximately 3.5, which means that the hazard ratio is equal to 3.5. This means that the hazard in group A is 3.5 times the hazard in group B. For example, if we would multiply the baseline hazard by 3.5, we will get the hazard of group A. For example, the hazard at 10 years of the baseline group is 0 0.2, and if we multiply this value by 3.5, we will get the corresponding hazard of group A. Note that the hazard function of group A is equal to the baseline hazard function times some constant. The Cox proportional hazards model therefore assumes that the two hazard functions are proportional, which means that the hazard ratio is assumed to be constant over time. If we divide both sides by the baseline hazard function, like this, we see that this ratio is equal to the hazard ratio, which is equal to e to the power of beta for every unit increase in x. If we run the following code in the statistical software tool R to compute the Cox proportional hazards model based on a simple example, we'll get the following output. E to the power of this coefficient will give us the hazard ratio, which tells us that at any given time, people in group A are 3.5 times more likely to die within a small time period compared to the people in group B. The 95% confidence interval is very wide in this example, which is due to that we have a very small sample size. The null hypothesis states that the hazard ratio is equal to 1. Note that the interval includes the value 1, and that the p-value is greater than the general significance level of 0 0.05. This means that the hazard ratio is not significantly different from 1. 
or that this coefficient is not significantly different from zero, which means that we cannot reject the null hypothesis. This means that there is no significant difference between the two hazard functions. This value is the reciprocal of the hazard ratio. 0.2861 would be the hazard ratio if instead would have used group A as the baseline group. 1 minus this value is equal to 0 0.7139, which tells us that the ones in group B have a 71% lower risk of dying within a certain time interval compared to the ones in group A. For example, if we would multiply the hazard of group A at 10 years by 0 0.2861, we would get the hazard of group B at the same time point. And if you would multiply the hazard of group B by 3.5, we would get the hazard of group A. This is how the corresponding output in SPSS would look like. When we just compare the survival between two groups like this, we can simply use the log rank test that we discussed in the previous video. The main advantage with the Cox proportional hazard model is that we can extend it to include other variables, such as age and sex of the participants. We can therefore control and analyze the effect of several explanatory variables on the survival time. Suppose that we would extend our previous model, where we now also include the variable age, which is on continuous scale with the unit years. By including the variable age in the model, we can adjust for possible age differences within the two groups. For example, suppose that beta 2 would be estimated to 0 0.095. e to the power of 0 0.095 is about 1.1, which means that the risk of dying is increasing by 10% when the person gets one year older when we control for the other variables in the model. Similar to other regression methods, we can use a likelihood ratio test to compare two models. Remember that the hazard ratio between two groups is assumed to be constant over time. If, for example, the Kaplan-Meier curves would cross like this, it would be hard to argue that the hazard ratio between the two groups is constant over time because the risk of dying seems to be higher in group A during the first years, whereas the risk of death seems to be higher in group B later on. One way to check the proportional hazards assumption is to generate a log minus log plot, and then check if the curves are parallel or not. To fulfill the proportional hazards assumption, the curves should be approximately parallel. To generate this plot, we compute the log of the negative log of the estimated survival probabilities and use the log scale for the x-axis. This was the end of this video about the Cox proportional hazards model. Thanks for watching.